hey guys welcome back for another detailed stock analysis so in this video i'll cover coupang which was started as the amazon of south korea and they did their ipo in march 2021 at 35 dollars per share after the ipo we saw some legendary investors taking position in coupang so for instance bill gates bought about 5.7 million shares at approximately 28 dollars per share and Stanley Drakenmiller paid even more, approximately $42 per share for his 15.5 million shares. So definitely there are some backing from smart investors in Coupang. Unfortunately, that's not helping the share price, especially in 2022, as we have seen most growth stocks lost significant value over the last few weeks. And Coupang is no exception to that. Currently it's trading at around $18, almost 65% down from its recent high. So it's probably a good time to analyze the company and see whether it makes sense to make an investment at $18 or not. Now, in this video, I'll cover their fundamentals, their growth prospects. And at the end of the video, I'll share why I think Coupang Pay, which is just a subsidiary of Coupang, itself might be worth 10 to $15 billion in the near future. So I think you'll find that pretty interesting. For context, the total market cap of Coupang is currently sitting at around $32 billion. So let's begin with their share structure after the IPO. So as you can see, the IPO participants own only about 6% of the total shares and 94% of the shares, approximately 1.6 billion shares are held by the existing shareholders. And their average price is $226 per share. So that's how much they paid for their shares on average. So it's obvious that those existing shareholders can easily crash the share price by selling their shares. Now, I did some more digging to see how many shares the existing shareholders sold so far. And what I found is that out of their 1.6 billion shares, the existing shareholders sold approximately 209 million shares, which is about 13% of their total shares. So that's not too bad for a new IPO. And most of those shares were actually sold in private arrangement, not in the open market. So that's a good sign as well. Uh, that means that there are interest from other institutional investors in buying Coupang from these existing shareholders. So in summary, they still hold about 87% of their total stake. Um, so that's good. And most importantly, their CEO, Bom Kim, he sold only about 1.2 million shares out of his 176 million shares. That's less than 1% of his entire position. And I think that's a good sign as well. Now I'll put a link on the description where you can find all the details of these insider transactions if you're interested. Okay, so looking at the fundamentals of their business, they grew their revenue 10X from 2016 to trailing 12 months. So that's very impressive. In 2016, they had a revenue of $1.7 billion. And in the trailing 12 months, that was $17 billion in revenue. So that's an impressive 60% year over year compounded growth in revenue over the last few years. Now, with that revenue growth, they're also taking e-commerce market shares in South Korea. As you can see here, in 2017, they had only 7.4% market share. And in 2021, that was an impressive 15.7% market share. And if you look at the trend, it looks like they will keep getting more market shares going forward in South Korea. So that's really good. In terms of their operations, they're still losing money uh, like many other growth-oriented businesses out there. So for instance, they lost about a billion dollars in the last 12 months alone, which is definitely not a good sign, but after digging a little bit more on why they lost so much money in the last 12 months, I've found three key reasons for that. So first of all, there was a fulfillment center fire that cost them $285 million. Now, I don't expect that kind of fire-related expenses every year or every quarter going forward. So that's sort of a one-time expense for them. The second reason is that they paid $186 million in stock-based compensations in 2021. Now, that's a non-cash expense and not unusual for new IPOs. Again, I expect that will be lower going forward. So that's my opinion. And finally, which I think the major reason for their you know, high operational loss is that their labor cost associated with their growth plans went up significantly. So you know, they're expanding their businesses in several key areas and that's why their operating cost went up. So I expect when all the infrastructures are built, they will be able to reduce their operational cost. 
Now, looking at their cash flow from operations, I like the trend. They were losing a lot of money earlier, but in the trailing 12 months, they lost about $191 million. And the overall trend over the last three to four years looks good to me. So in summary, I think I like how aggressively they're growing their revenue and how aggressively they're taking market shares in South Korea. But I'm a little bit concerned about their operational losses. Uh, specifically in the last 12 months, they lost about a billion dollars from operations. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. All right, so looking at their gross margin, you see that they had a consistent 16% gross margin over the last three years. So earlier they had smaller margin like seven to 8%, but in the recent years, they improved their margin significantly. So that's pretty impressive. If they can do about 25% gross margin going forward, let's say in the next four to five years, that would be really impressive. Now, if you compare their margin with Amazon and eBay, you will notice that eBay has the highest gross margin out of these three companies. And that's because they have a different business model. So it would be wise to compare Coupang with Amazon because they have the similar business model. So you see that Amazon has a consistent 25% gross margin over the last four years. And Coupang, on the other hand, has about 16% gross margin. So I would like to see them improve their margin. They're doing the right thing. Um, so going forward, if they can do about 25% margin, that would be really good for them. Looking at their balance sheet, they have about $5.9 billion uh, in total current assets. And out of that, $3.9 billion in cash and cash equivalents. And if you look at their total current liabilities, that's about $4.5 billion. No significant current debt or long-term debt. But the total liabilities are sitting at about $6 billion. So with $4 billion in cash on their balance sheet and $6 billion total liabilities, it looks like they should be okay. But my concern is that they're losing about a billion dollars per year from operations. If that continues, then you're looking at potential share issuance or new debt issuance in the next one to two years. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. So in terms of valuation, it's really difficult to value a money losing business like Coupang. So I'll not try that. I'll just show you some metrics. So, for example, their current price to sales ratio is 2.2 and their enterprise value to sales ratio is sitting at 2.63. If you compare with other e-commerce businesses, these numbers look attractive at this point. If you look at analyst recommendation, there is no recommendation from any analyst in, in this month. If you look at the analyst price target from 10 analysts, the average price target is sitting at $33. The lowest is $27.50. And the stock is currently trading at $18. So basically there is approximately 80% upside from current price according to the analyst price target. Okay, so let's now focus on the most critical part of the video, which is what's their growth story. I think their growth plans and how successfully they execute those plans will have a critical role in their future share price movement. So we'll start by looking at the e-commerce market revenue projection for South Korea. As you can see, the e-commerce revenue is expected to grow from $119 billion in 2021 to about $140 billion in 2025. So that's not really a super high growth. That's approximately 4% compounded year-over-year -year growth in total e-commerce revenue in South Korea. This is because the market is already saturated and it will probably grow with the typical GDP growth rate going forward. So this growth scenario is not very optimistic or very promising for Coupang, and that's why they're exploring other areas to expand. So for instance, they recently started a fresh grocery delivery service in South Korea called Rocket Fresh, which will probably grow over the years. Now, South Korea is a densely populated country and most people work extra hours. So they don't have really have enough time for going to the grocery or cooking at home, etc. So I think this kind of services will gain popularity over the years. Another similar service is Coupang Eats, somewhat similar to Uber Eats or DoorDash. So we'll have to wait and see how these initiatives play out over time. They recently launched a streaming service called Coupang Play. And I think it will probably gain popularity over years as well. Now, they're also trying to expand outside of South Korea. So for instance, they recently started expanding in Japan, Taiwan, and Singapore. On the surface, it looks like a great news, but you'll have to acknowledge that there are severe competitions in those markets. Just to give you guys an example, 
for example, in Japan, their most popular e-commerce site is Rakuten Ishiba with 41% market share. And then Amazon with 38% market share. So I don't know how Coupang will successfully compete in that market, for instance. So at this point, I'm not entirely sure how successful they will be outside of Korea. That's something we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so now we'll talk about their subsidiary called Coupang Pay, and that's their payment processing or fintech segment. And they have about 10 million registered users using Coupang Pay as of this video. So this is somewhat similar to Alibaba's and Financial. And if you follow the news, you probably know that Alibaba wanted to do a $100 billion IPO for and Financial. So that's why I'm super bullish on Coupang Pay. And recently, South Korea's leading payment processing platform, Kakao Pay, they went public for a $15 billion valuation with the registered users of 30 million. And if you compare that with Coupang Pay's 10 million registered users, then you can see that Coupang Pay itself should be worth around $5 billion as of today. And in the next few years, if they can successfully increase their users, they will increase their valuations as well. And at some point in the future, this fintech segment alone could be worth 15 to $20 billion. Again, this is based on how successfully they can scale and expand their Coupang Pay network, their fintech segment. So that's the uncertainty here. But if all is well, we could see a separate IPO for Coupang Pay and that will definitely benefit the Coupang shareholders. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so let's summarize the video. So they're not a profitable business. They lost about a billion dollars from operations in the trailing 12 months. So that's something you need to keep in mind before you invest in this stock. And you are essentially betting on their growth, uh, betting on their future, five years from now, 10 years from now. So that's where, why you are buying the stock. Their international expansion, I'm not so sure about that. There are severe competitions in those markets, so I'm not sure how successful they will be in those markets. Insiders have still their skin on the game. They have 87% of their shares left. They sold only about 13%. And the CEO sold less than 1% of his share. So that's good to see. For me, this is a speculative bet. And I think for you as well, this should be a speculative bet. 0.5% uh, of my portfolio is, is in this stock. So we'll see how that uh, plays out going forward. Okay, so I hope you liked the video. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck with your investment.